NX was created by former Googlers Victor Savkin and Jeff Cross, who both made significant contributions to Angular at Google. NX comes with some strong architectural opinions on how to create applications that scale well from a code style and organization perspective. So this video isn't specifically about NX, but rather it's about how we can use some of the best practice architectural principles provided by the NX team in a standard Angular application without actually using NX. So we will be taking a look at a sort of lighter version of the NX structure. And the cool thing about this approach is that there isn't really much setup involved. So you can use this architecture easily, even for smaller apps. And personally, I pretty much prefer just to use NX with Angular for everything at this stage, but there are situations where you might not be able to use NX for a variety of reasons, or maybe you just aren't interested in using NX. So let's get into it. What we are looking at here is a simplified version of an application that I'm currently working on with all of the implementation details removed. So we basically just have the general file and folder structure left along with the routing and module setup. So this way I can just freely share the source code with you and just focus on explaining the key concepts. So let's start with the key NX concept we are using, which is this idea of having these four different library types. Now, in this case, rather than creating NX libraries, we are just using the same concept to group components and services into folders. And these four types of folders are feature, UI, data access, and utils. So before we get into that specifically, what we've done is we have identified the different features in our application which in this case is clients, home, and notes. And we also have a shared folder, which I'll get to later. So these are basically just the routed sections of our application. So everything in the clients folder is going to be located at forward slash clients. Everything in home is going to be forward slash home, notes, forward slash notes, and so on. And within these folders, we have our four different folder types that I just mentioned. However, we might not always need all four of these folder types in every single one of our features. So the feature folder is responsible for holding our routed components for that particular feature. So that is a component that is activated by going to a particular route. And these components are going to be smart components. So smart components are responsible for handling complex logic, injecting services, setting up observable streams and things like that. And our feature folder might just hold one smart or routed component. And that is the case for our home page. For example, we just have the one component in here. But if there are multiple routes for a particular feature, for example, with our clients, we might have uh, just the default clients page, which might be at just forward slash clients. But we also might have a detail view. So clients forward slash two. Uh, in this case, I have a survey for a particular client. So I might have clients forward slash two forward slash survey. So in this case, we might have multiple smart components in our feature folder. So in this example, that is the case for the clients feature and the notes feature as well, but not for our homepage. And you can see if I just expand some of these uh, smart components here, you can see it's just sort of a typical sort of component. We have our module file, our routing information and stuff like that. And routing is also something I'm going to come back to a bit later in the video. Okay, so then we have the UI folder and this is responsible for holding our dumb or presentational components. So whilst the smart feature components are sort of like the container component for a page that is routed to our dumb components or presentational components will generally make up everything within that page. So things like a list or perhaps a section with author information or maybe a map or other things like that. So unlike a smart component, a dumb or presentational component shouldn't really have to know anything about the structure of the application or what's going on. It should generally just receive everything it needs to know as an input from its smart component parent and anything it needs to communicate with the app, it can do with an output. Now, this isn't always strictly true, but it's the general idea. Now, moving on to the data access folder. So this is just going to hold everything related to accessing data. So generally things like services and stores, 
Uh, in the case of this application, I have a client service and I'm using NGRX component store. And so that's what this file is going to be for. So likely what is going to happen is our smart components here are going to be pulling in information from this data access folder. And then these smart components having pulled in that data will likely pass it to some presentational UI component to actually display it. And finally, we just have a utils folder and I don't actually have any particular examples in here, but the basic idea is that any sort of simple helper functions uh, could live in this utils folder. So the cool thing about structuring your application this way is that all of the related code is co-located. So everything that powers the client's feature is right here within these folders and it is all clearly organized. So it's very easy to see what's going on. Now, the one exception here is for code that is shared among multiple features. And for that, we have the shared folder. This follows the same structure as our features, except we probably won't have smart components in here. So we might only have the data access UI and utils folders. Uh, you can also create other types of folders if you need or want to. It's just a good general sort of starter structure to follow. So the approach with a shared folder here does differ from the typical sort of shared module in Angular applications. So we aren't creating a shared module that is imported throughout the application with all of our common uh, components and things like that. We are using the single component Angular module approach or the SCAM approach. So every component directive or pipe in our application will be declared and exported in its own module. So if one of our features wanted to use a shared UI component, then it would import that components module into its own module. For example, the client list page uses the shared list data component. So inside of its module, we make sure to import the list data module, and that's going to make that available to use in this component. And all of the components in the application take this approach not just those in the shared folder. So you can see our client specific UI components here also have their own module where they are declaring and exporting themselves. So the last thing I want to cover is the routing. So you might've noticed this particular feature folder called shell. So we have a client shell and we also have a notes shell, but notably we don't have that for our homepage. So the basic idea of what we're doing here is for features that have multiple routes, we're using the shell feature to set up routing for that feature. So all of the routing information for clients is going to be in this file in the shell folder. So you can see I'm setting up the default path here to go to the client list feature. If we have an ID, we're going to use the client detail feature. And if we're going to ID forward slash survey, we're going to use client survey. So all of the routing information for this feature is defined here. And then all we do in our main routing file is we just set up a single route that points to that shell module. So this is going to make everything inside of our clients feature be available at forward slash clients in our application. And then everything within the client specific routing is now going to be available at, for example, this will be clients and this will be clients forward slash ID this will be clients forward slash ID forward slash survey. So again, this makes it easy to manage the features we are working on, because if I'm working on clients, then almost everything is going to be within this folder. So even if I need to add new child routes, for example, I might want an additional clients forward slash booking page or something like that. Then I can create that new feature component by adding it to this folder here. And then I can just open up the shell and add in the new route as well. And all of that is managed from within this folder. So that's the general idea of this approach. One thing in particular I like about this approach is that following it tends to encourage good application architecture. For example, it encourages the separation of smart and dumb components, which I think is probably one of the key ways to improve your application architecture, at least in the context of an Angular application. And the other benefit of this approach is that it obviously is going to translate very well into an NX workspace. So if you ever do find yourself wanting to transition to NX, you will already have most of the key ideas down and you'll just need to add a few additional concepts like generating libraries on top of that. 
So if you do want to learn more specifically about NX, I already have a lot of videos available that you can check out in the description. And as I mentioned, I will have the source code for this available below so that you can have a bit of a poke around yourself. All of the implementation details have been stripped out, but the general structure and modules and routing and things like that are there. And the actual application that I am working on is much larger and more complex than this, but it uses this same basic structure all the way through. And I will be releasing a pro module walking through how to build the entire thing over at Elite Ionic soon. So if you're interested in that, make sure to keep an eye out. Okay, that's it for this video. I hope you got something out of it. If you did, please feel free to leave a like and subscribe. It really helps the channel and I will see you in the next video.